25 years ago, Bruno Richard Hauptmann came to trial for the kidnapping and murder of the Lindbergh baby. Thousands stormed the venerable court at Flemington, New Jersey, to witness one of the most sensational trials of modern times. A jury of eight men and four women was to weigh the fate of the immigrant Bronx carpenter charged with a terrible and shocking crime. The trial continued for weeks as the state built its case. There were moments of high drama as when Charles A. Lindbergh, a national hero, testified. America watched with chilled fascination as he confronted the killer of his infant son. A chain of damning evidence grew. The kidnap ladder proved made in Hauptmann's workshop. The baby's sleeping suit tendered in return for the ransom money identified at the trial by Mrs. Lindbergh. Handwriting analysis proved Hauptmann wrote the ransom note. Finally, the testimony of Dr. John F. Condon, Jaffsey, the ransom go-between, identifying Hauptmann as the man he paid the $50,000. Fighting desperately for his life, Hauptmann took the stand, still maintaining his innocence in the face of the state's tight-linked web of evidence, but badly shaken by the raking cross-examination of Attorney General Willens. Didn't you swear to the untruth in the Bronx courthouse? Didn't you swear to the untruth in the courthouse? Didn't you lie on the road? Time and time again, didn't you? I did not. You did not? No. All right. When you were arrested with this Lindbergh ransom money, you had a $20 bill. Lindbergh ransom money, did they ask you what it was? Did they ask you? They did. Did you lie to them or did you tell them the truth? Did you lie to him or did you tell him the truth? I, I said nothing to him. You lied, didn't you? I did, yes. Yeah. After hours of suspense, the jury returned the verdict that brought to an end the courtroom drama and the Lindbergh's three-year ordeal of grief and public spectacle. The verdict was guilty of murder in the first degree. Hauptmann refused to admit guilt to the very moment he paid with his life for what was called the crime of the century 25 years ago.